Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pinion. I bring you today's word for August 5th, 2015. For the past couple of days, I've been sharing some messages about some of the things that I meditated on during the break while I was on my three-week uh, sabbatical. And so one of the things I really been medi- I meditated on during the break is something I've been meditating on for a long time is God's grace. So if you've been following today's word, you know that for over for about the last three years, we've been teaching on the grace of God. And Studying God's grace has really changed me, changed the way that I look at God, the way that I look at others, and the way that I look at myself. The the revelation of God's grace has really kind of just changed every aspect of my life. And so during the break, yes, I was meditating on the grace of God, just kind of thinking about the grace of God. And one of the things that I think about a lot is the relationship between God's grace and our faith. And because I know how I used to think about faith and teach on faith before, and now this understanding of God's grace has really kind of just changed all of that. So that being the case, um, tomorrow I'm going to get back to teaching on the life of Peter. This is the last message of kind of like some of the things that I thought about during the break. And so today I want to focus in on uh, the relationship between God's grace and our faith. So what does this mean to you today? I actually have 11 things to share with you. So let's get into them. Number one, faith is not something you do to try to get God to respond. I I had this understanding for years. Uh, That's kind of the way that I thought about faith. I I thought that my faith got God to move, right? So I, I even taught, you know, faith moves God. And so while that was my understanding, it was just wrong. Faith is not humanity's attempt to get divinity to move. Faith is our positive response to what God has already done by his grace. Faith is our response to God's grace. Number two, faith begins where the will of God is known. If you don't know the will of God, then you can't have faith. What are you having faith in? You could be a hoping and a wishing, but you you can't have faith if you don't know what the will of God is. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith can't get what grace has not already provided. So faith doesn't go get something that isn't already there by God's grace. So you have to know what God has already provided for you to use your faith to access it. Number three, stop trying to use your faith to get God to do what you want him to do. That's not faith. Really, and and, and, and in a lot of ways, that's manipulation. That's not faith. Faith is not you trying to get God to do what you want him to do. God wants you to use your faith to access what he has already provided. God wants you to use your faith to access what he's already done for you. And there is a big difference between the two. Number four, no matter what happens in the earth, you can have peace in knowing that God has already made provision for it. And he did that by his grace. And he did that from the foundations of the world. Number five, you will never face something that God did not already know about and that he did not already prepare you for. He already did it. He already knew. Nothing occurs to God. There is no surprise in God's mind. So God knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. And since he knows everything, he already made provision for it. He already prepared you for it. And he did that by his amazing grace. Number six, faith has a rest component to it. When when you're truly in faith, you are also in rest because you know that God has already done it. If you're trying to get God to move, then you have not entered into God's rest. You have not fully embraced his finished work. See, religion taught us to attempt to get God to do things for us. That's what religion taught us. But the word, if we really get into the word, the word teaches us to understand what God has already done. Number eight, see prayer. So how does this relate to prayer? Prayer should be saying to God what he has already said to you. Prayer should be more about agreement. Uh, than you attempting to get God to move. Number nine, you don't read the Bible to get God to move. You read the Bible to renew your mind so you can think the way God thinks and so you can know what he's already done for you. Number 10, you don't pray for three hours to get to try to get God to move, to prove to God that you are so holy and try to get God to move. No, you pray to find out God's will. So you can be in sync with him in the earth so you can pray his will and come in agreement with him for him to manifest it. Number 11 and finally, God has made plans for you. Yes, you by grace. He now expects you to seek him concerning those plans and then use your faith to see the manifestation of those plans in the earth. There is a relationship between God's grace and our faith 
And God expects us to understand that relationship and to act accordingly. So let's close this out with the declaration of faith. Speak this over your life. Speak this from a believing heart. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your unearned grace and also my requirement to live by faith. Everything you do for me, you do by grace. I can never earn or deserve anything you do in my life. Everything I do in relation to you, you expect me to do it by faith. Faith is not me trying to get you to put a yes on my plans. Faith is actually you trying to get me to put a yes on your plans. My faith agrees with your grace. My faith accesses your grace. My faith comes in agreement with your will. And it pulls your will to the earth as it is in heaven. My faith comes in agreement with you, with your plans, with your desires, with your will, even when what I see in the earth is in direct contradiction with what you've spoken to me. So my faith is not based on what I see or what I receive through sense realm evidence. My faith is based on you, your word, and the revelation you give me. When you speak to me, I know it's already done. In your realm, in heaven, in eternity, even though it might take some time to manifest in my realm, in the earth, in time. So I refuse to live by what I see in the earth. I don't live my life based on the natural. I live my life by faith. And my faith agrees with your reality. Even when it flies in the face of the earthly reality I see every day. So I declare that my faith accesses your grace. And living this way, I will become the man or woman that you've called me to be. And I will get to experience your best for my life. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to www.todaysword.org. Look on the right-hand side, scroll down, sign up. you get the messages, they'll be a blessing to you. As you head into this day, just remember, you, you are the just, you're called to live by faith, and your faith simply accesses God's grace so you can live the life you were born to live. Have a blessed day.